Hi. If you follow me on TikTok or have seen some of my previous art that I've made, you'll know it's no secret that I am a FNAF fan. I cannot tell you how excited I was to learn that there's a movie coming out on October 27th. A few days ago, and by a few days ago, I mean like Monday, September 4th, I realized that there were about 53 days until the release of the FNAF movie. And then it hit me. There are 50 choosable Ultimate Custom Night characters. So then I thought to myself, what if I did a countdown of sorts, drawing 50 choosable Ultimate Custom Night characters until the FNAF movie releases? And so, for the past seven days, that is exactly what I've been doing. I've been streaming the process here on my YouTube, and so I'm here to share the first seven of my Ultimate Custom Night Countdown series. As a side note, I do know that there are more than 50 Ultimate Custom Night characters. I believe there are technically 57, with Dee Dee and the six characters that she can bring in. However, because I thought of this on day 53, I didn't really want to go back and retroactively draw the ones that I had missed, so I just decided to stick with the main 50 that you can choose. The first character that I rolled was Rockstar Foxy. I was really excited to start with this character because he is my second favorite. I had drawn him before in an earlier series and so I was excited to be able to kind of revisit that. I started with a really rough sketch. When I start sketching I don't really think about anatomy at all. I'm really just trying to get in life and gesture and motion and all that fun stuff. And then on the second pass is when I start thinking about anatomy so you'll see that I kind of move his head over. It didn't really align with the rest of his body, um, and his hands get changed a few times just to make sure that they line up with the arms. The bird was fun, but I do feel it was a little bit of an afterthought. I tried to keep these drawings under an hour, and this one was starting to run a little bit longer, probably because I was out of practice with drawing FNAF characters. But the rest of the drawings sped up pretty quickly. I originally thought that I was going to paint the character, but which is why you'll see me drop in a green underpainting. I have a strange method of painting where I kind of paint a base coat or an underpainting and then I start painting up the highlights instead of painting down from shadows. I decided not to paint this character and just go with like near flat colors because like I said I want to try and keep these drawings under an hour each. Overall I was pretty happy with this drawing of Funtime Foxy. My style takes them from animatronics and kind of turns them more into mascots. They don't have a lot of the robotic kind of metal pieces that fit together. But overall I was really happy with this drawing. The next character that I rolled on my wheel of FNAF characters is Pigpatch. Um, I was really uncertain going into this drawing as I've never drawn pig patch and I've never drawn a pig in my life, but I know how to stylize animals, I know what a pig looks like. I didn't put it on my canvas because I didn't want it to take up too much space, but on a second monitor I did have an image of a real life pig up so that I can see kind of what shapes I needed to push and pull and whatnot. I'm like fairly happy with this drawing, it's not my favorite. Uh, so far out of the seven that I've done, it is certainly my least favorite, but it's not bad in any sense, and it is something I wouldn't have finished it if I wasn't like fully happy with it. The third character that I rolled is my favorite character in the entire FNAF series, Funtime Foxy. I've drawn Funtime Foxy a lot. I actually drew them a few days before I started this challenge. So again, I started really loose, not particularly thinking about anatomy at all. I wanted a kind of big, open announcer pose, especially because in Ultimate Custom Night we finally get to hear Funtime Foxy's voice. It's that very classic transatlantic 1920s announcer voice. It's fantastic, I love it. So I thought to give them a big, broad, wide pose, both arms out. And I know that she doesn't have a microphone, but I decided to give him one just because, uh, of course, I had to make it the classic early 1920s microphone instead of the modern day one that you see with Funtime Freddy and the other iterations of Freddy. This version of Foxy also has a tail, which again I think really helped balance out the pose. There's something that was kind of missing from the Rockstar Foxy one and I think it was a tail. Day 4, the wheel presented me with Golden Freddy. 
I was a little worried about this character, not as worried as I am about characters like Old Man Consequences and Balloon Boy, but I was a little concerned. I haven't really been drawing these characters as animatronics, and so the thought of drawing one that is constantly depicted as slumped over and out of order was a little challenging. I didn't want to depict him upright and sort of fixed, as that's contrary to the character, so instead I decided to take a new direction and turned him into an old, well-loved stuffed animal. Very Hundred Acre Woods, if you will. I've always found dolls that have button eyes to be slightly creepy, even if they're not meant to be, and that's what I wanted to do for Golden Freddy. The button eyes in place of his hollowed out animatronic head, and stuffing popping out of his seams instead of wires and other sharp bits. All in all, I think I did fairly well translating his design from that of an animatronic to that of a cute and cuddly little stuffed animal. Taking different directions like these is something that I'm going to have to think about as I get further into the series, especially when I come across characters like Golden Freddy that are going to be difficult to translate into my style without losing the original intention of the character. Day 5? The wheel presented me with Bonnie. Bonnie is a character that I have drawn before as well. Uh, I was somewhat happy with this original version, although I wanted to push my shapes even more. While I was on stream, I joked about making Bonnie look a little bit like Wallace and Gromit's Curse of the Were Rabbit, but ultimately I decided to leave that for Nightmare Bonnie, so good luck when he comes around. I really wanted to make his head kind of oblong with a larger nose, but it wasn't looking quite right. It was then that I remembered that rabbits don't really have the type of nose depicted on his model, and even though for Golden Freddy I talked about keeping the direction of the original character somewhat intact, I felt that drawing the rabbit's kind of V-shaped nose would really help Bonnie look a little bit more like what I was wanting. If there's one thing I could go back and change on this piece, I'm not entirely happy with the way that I've drawn his feet, but overall I'm still fairly happy with the drawing. On day six, I was given Lefty. Very excited to draw this guy again. I have drawn him before, uh, however the first time I drew him, I did forget to make him left-handed, so this time I made sure to correct that. I wanted to get a pretty big and kind of inviting, huggable pose, especially because he's meant to capture the puppet, and I thought that Henry might build something that his daughter would trust. His face is modeled kind of after a California black bear. I want to make all the bears iterations of Freddy a different species of bear, I just think it'll be fun and interesting to add some variants to the series. But yeah, pretty happy with the way this one came out. I also did colored line art instead of black line art. It was just something that Red and I were talking about in chat, and I think I like the way it looked. I've never really done colored line art before, I tend to stick to black. I don't know if I would do it again, I think my style is really geared towards black line art, but I might experiment with it again later in this series. Day 7, the last day of this recap, was Rockstar Bonnie. It was very interesting to get two Bonnies and two Foxies each a day apart, but it was cool because I got to kind of correct some of the things I wasn't very happy about in my Bonnie drawing. In the Bonnie drawing from two days ago, I wasn't really happy with the way that I drew the feet. I felt that they were too canine feline and not enough rabbit, so I was able to fix that. I went with a very similar pose, except for this one I made him a little confused, because in UCN he has that line about finally finding his guitar, so I wanted to draw him here, kind of misplacing it. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with this drawing, especially compared to the 2021 version. Um, not that there's anything particularly bad about the 2021 version, it's just it was a different style. I was going for very stuffed animal then, and now I'm kind of going more like cartoon mascot type. But yeah, and that concludes the recap of week one. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I will be streaming these every day except for Thursday. If you do see me streaming on Thursday, it's usually because my internet was so bad one day that I just couldn't stream. I will be posting shortened versions of each day on my TikTok, which is spork underscore art, as well as the finished pieces on my website, which will be linked in the description. I really hope to continue this series for the rest of the 42 or 43 days I have left. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for the recap of the next seven drawings.